Welcome to Strong and Balanced. My name is Pat Agostino. I'm a physical therapist here with People Fit. If you've never done this type of class before, we always ask you to consult your physician or physical therapist first and work within your own limits. All these exercises can be done at a kitchen countertop or something that's stable that you can hold on to uh, if need be. And with that, let's get started. A little bit of a warm up, and I'm actually going to place you all on mute, which I forgot to do. Um, perfect. And let's start off with a nice little warm up. Again, let's get in, a, in an athletic position. Knees are soft, head and shoulders are up off your chest. Pull your head up and let's do some nice neck circles in one direction. Excellent. And let's rotate in the opposite direction. Perfect. And arm circles in one direction, please. And let's reverse that direction. Great, little arch in your back, belly button in. We're gonna do some marching in place. Fantastic. We're gonna to start to bring the arms back and forth. If you'd like to add a little bit of a step back, we're going to do it stepping back at an angle, trying to bend your front knee. Foot goes back, arms go back. Foot goes back, arms go back. Good, a little side to side. We are going to spend the last 10 minutes on the floor. So if you um, or in bed, to do a few of those exercises and let's come on back up. Feet a little wider this time, knees are bent, stick your bottom out and let's do a little bit of rotating side to side. Fantastic. Feet are about hips width apart. Let's come back onto your heels and up on your toes, heels and toes. Again, you're trying to grip the ground with those toes when you come on up. And we got 10 more, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's get into one of your balance positions. Easiest is feet together, followed by heel to the inside of your big toe, one foot in front of the other, or one foot off the ground. Whichever position you choose, let's bend those knees, pull that belly button in, and we're gonna turn our heads left and right. Listening to those feet, but allowing your hips to move to catch yourself. After a few head turns, you can figure out how your balance is today, and you may want to either move to an easier position or a more difficult position. In five. Four, three, two, and one. If you had your feet staggered, let's see if we can reverse that stagger. Other foot and look left and right for me. In 
five, four, three, two, and one. Let's come on back up. Arm out to the side, hand on your hip. Let's bring your feet together and let's slide your left foot slightly back. Bend your right knee and kick the left leg out to the side. Good. See if you can tap your heel to your toe. And see if you can do it with lightly touching the ground or just click the heel and go right back up without even touching the ground. Good. You notice I have my hand on my hip to keep it down. You'll get the muscle groups a little bit better back here. If we can do that for five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go all to the other side, feet together, slide the opposite foot back and kick it right up to the side. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go back to your toe and heel raises. Toes are slightly in. Rip that ground, heel and toe. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so let's get into kind of a step forward, staggered foot position, a little bit of space between my feet. And let's just start to work on a little bit of side to side, okay? So it's primarily hips that you're working side to side. Let's loosen up those hips and tell them, yes, it's okay to move in this manner. And that's actually how you end up catching yourself a lot of times. So let's move those hips side to side. You're flying the airplane, but, but the arms are not the thrust of what you're doing. It's mainly the hips, okay? So let's stay in this position, nice and soft, and you're gonna to touch your front foot's heel to your shin, and then your toe in front of you, okay? So just touch and return. And I want you to see if you can hit that same spot each time by stepping in front, both knees are bent, and touching, good, in five, four, Three, so it's toe to the floor, heel to the ground. All right, let's reverse direction and, and step forward with that other foot a little bit, bend those knees, and let's just see if we can work them side to side. It's just a side to side motion, good. And you can bring your arms out just to kind of get those hips to loosen up. Okay, in five, four, three, two, and one. Bring that front foot a little closer, bend those knees, and let's work on tapping your toe on the floor and heel to your shin. Toe to the floor, heel to your shin. Good, you can do it with the arms out if you like to encourage those hips to move or hands on your hips, whichever you prefer. Listen to that back foot. Let's get some equal weight between your heel and your forefoot on that foot. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, let's reverse back to where we were a minute ago. So let's reverse feet. We're gonna do a second set here, except for if this is easy, then maybe try 
air touching the ground, which means you don't quite touch it, and then touching your toe to the back of your calf. So touch the front of and then the back. Otherwise, just continue. This is a challenge. Just continue heel to toe, heel to toe, or air touch to calf, air touch to calf. Good. Remember, this knee stays nice and soft. Hip is in. That helps you. For five, four, three, two, and I know that leg is getting tired, and one. All right, let's go to the opposite side. Again, shift on over there, step forward, and either continue with your heel to shin or toe to calf. Good. In eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's shake those legs right on out, and we're going to stretch those calves out. So let's turn your left toe slightly in, and this can always be done holding onto a countertop or a wall. Nice long step forward with the opposite foot. So what do I want? Shoulders back, but more importantly, belly button in to see if we can do a little pelvic tilt. And then you're gonna bend this front knee. So maybe you can start to feel a little stretch in the front of this hip or the back of your calf. And let's take a few nice deep breaths. One kid back to college last week and one next week. And the one to high school this week. All back to, the, I can't believe September's here already. In 10 more seconds. Great. And let's switch the other side. Toes slightly in. Long step forward. Belly button in, shoulders back, and let's bend that front knee. And about 20 more seconds here. Great job, let's come on back up. If you wanna hold on to a wall, that's fine, but let's see if we can step onto that left foot. Let's shorten yourself by bending that knee, reaching back with this back foot, but more importantly, you're gonna lean forward, hold your hips or the wall, and you're gonna kick your heel up towards the ceiling, please. If it bothers your knee and you're getting maybe snapping on the outside, maybe try turning your toe in a little bit or maybe out to get away from that. And eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's switch to the other side. Same exact thing. Coming up and down. You're probably looking four or five feet in front of you on the floor. Your spine is nice and straight. Coming up and down for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And one, let's come on up and shake those legs out for a moment. Good. So we're gonna do a little bit of a twist. If you have a hip replacement or a little bit of arthritis, you're not gonna twist as much, but your knees are gonna be soft. Let's reach out with the right hand and you're just gonna see if you can, it's like opening a, a lazy Susan door. That's the way I think of it. I tap in front of me, and then I tap at a 90 degree angle. Tap and tap. 
Keep this knee bent because I want all the rotation not occurring at your knee, but occurring at your hip. So tap and tap. Good. We're just opening the door or a sprinkler head turning. Right back. Good. That's all we're doing is a little twisting. Now, if you could do it without quite bringing the foot back down to the ground each time, that is a challenge. It involves a lot of uh, these are rotational muscle groups. So that's great for five, four, three, don't work through pain, two, and one. Very nice work. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Again, we need to keep this knee nice and soft to protect it. You're going to tap in front. And then uh, if, you know, you're heading towards a 90 degree angle, you might not get all the way there, or some of you are quite flexible, we'll get a little further. But let's tap in front, tap out to the side. I'm moving my head, so everything from the belly button up, up is static, right? It is all moving in one unit. Tap and tap, or rotate and rotate. For five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna stretch your adductors. Um, for this one, again, you may wanna hold on to a countertop. Um, we're gonna see if we can just walk those feet out just a little bit. You can slide your hands down towards your knees. We're gonna maintain a little arch in your back. I want your head and chest up. I'm gonna lean forward to see if you can get a little stretch in the inside of the thighs. Right. For those of you that are super, super flexible and you wanna reach down towards the floor, please do. Nice, easy breaths. Again, for the super flexible of you, you can walk your hands over towards one foot to get a little bit more stretch on that side. And nice, easy breaths. And let's take a little field trip over to the other foot. See how it is doing. Or just grab onto your shin maybe on that side. Let's not overstretch. It should be a gentle stretch. Back over towards the middle. Nice, easy breath for three breaths. Two. One. Good. Let's start to come on back up. You're going to wiggle those feet back in to see if you can get yourself back up to standing. And as soon as you do, I want you to march in place and get some breaths in you. Let's get all the blood back up towards your head. It's probably not as bad as when we do the hamstring stretch, but still you can get a little lightheaded transitioning to this, these different positions. Okay. Um, if you have a mini resistance band, I would grab it at this point, maybe a glass of water. Um, so the mini resistance bands look something like this. And we're going to do a little bit of hip strengthening and get down on the floor. And we're gonna start on your back without the band on. Because we're gonna do a little bit of abdominal strengthening first. All right. So we're gonna start on your back and we're gonna do um, either some pelvic tilts, which involves you bending your knees pushing your lower back flat and holding for five seconds and relaxing. Or if you prefer, you can do the pelvic tilt and lift your head up, just supporting your, your head with your hand. And we'll do a little bit of bicycling in this position, all right? Just to see if we can work those abdominals. Again, 
arching the back during abdominal exercises is what typically screens it for most people. So let's stay right up with your lower back press. As soon as you start to feel, oh, maybe my lower back isn't being pressed as well, then maybe come on back down. If you're cycling for the first time, you can even stick your hands underneath your butt to give you a little bit more support when you do that. Then again, you're not gonna be able to support your head. And let's do this for another 15 seconds. And let's come on back down. Let's go resistance band um, around the knees. I'm gonna start with some bridging. You do not need a resistance band. You're gonna get a good workout without it. It just provides, again, a little bit more force down through these muscle groups. So feet are uh, about hips width apart, maybe an inch more. You're gonna spread your band till your thighs are parallel to each other. Just a little spread. Arms can be out or by your side. I do like to pull my shoulder blades in underneath me, just so I'm not putting all that pressure down through my neck. Belly button in, let's lift. For one, two, three, four, five, and down. Don't let the knees cave in together. Lift up again. Remember, let's maintain a little space between those knees throughout the whole exercise. And down. We're going to do four more of these up. And down. And three more. And down. Two more. And down. And the last one. And down, great. Let's start off in a side lying position. Now, if you normally do your left side first, let's do your right side and vice versa. And we'll see if there's, if you notice any appreciable difference. So in a side lying position, let's flex those knees a little bit. Hips are flexed, feet are together. Hand is on your hip. Let's open and close your clamshell. Sometimes you might find that the second leg you do is a little bit more of a challenge. It's because it is stabilizing on the floor the whole time as you're doing your top leg. So we only think that this is a top leg exercise, but it's actually working both for five, four, three, two, one. In the same position, we're gonna open and close the fire hydrant so the whole knee and foot stay bent, it raises up and then we mirror the bottom leg by landing foot to foot, knee to knee. Good. Up and down for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's straighten out both legs in line with your body. Bend the bottom foot back, roll your hips slightly forward and extend the top leg back. And let's raise and lower that leg. Trying not to go back down to the floor with it. Good. In 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, and one. Let's roll over onto your other side, please. And we do the same exact exercises. Knees are bent, feet together. Let's open and close the clamshell. Trying not to allow that top leg to roll back. In eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. And let's open the fire hydrant and close up and down, whole leg. Keep your hip down away from your ear, pushing it down with your hand. 
Good. So we just get those hip muscles. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Great. Let's straighten out your legs. Let's bend your bottom foot back. Roll your hips slightly forward. Extend your top leg back. And let's come up and down. Toes pointing straight ahead. Up and down. For 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Very nice work. Let's come right back onto your back. Just take that resistance band off. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a different exercise now. So that's all you're going to do is we're going to bend the left knee. The right, knee, right knee is straight. Let's lift the head up just a little bit, just to engage the abs. You can put your hands beside your head. And with your right leg straight, we're going to do some gentle circles in one direction. Okay, so we're just circling with our abs in, our lower back is pressed. Trying not to wiggle much but that leg. More little small circles. And let's reverse directions of those circles. Good. My circles are not smooth this morning. It's a different position for your hip flexor as well as your abs. For five, four, three, two, one. Let's switch to the other side. Again, let's engage the abs, bringing the shoulders off just a little bit. Head is supported to raise that other foot up about eight to 10 inches. And let's do some small circles in one direction. Doesn't matter which direction because we're gonna reverse it in a moment. Lower back stays pressed the whole time and let's reverse directions with that circle. For eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's cross that left ankle over your right knee. If you have a hip replacement, again, go nice and gentle with this one. But otherwise, take that left hand and you're going to push your knee, that, your left knee away to get a little bit more rotation at that hip. Again, don't work through any back pain or any hip pain. And let's reverse sides. Left foot, right, cross your right ankle over your left knee. Push that knee gently away. Great. Soles of your feet together. Drop your knees down to the sides. Take the palms of your hands and push your knees gently down towards the floor. Get a nice groin stretch. And this may be a good opportunity to do any stretches you typically do on the floor. And I appreciate you guys coming to the class this morning. And I will see you next week. Take care. Thank you.